first question, Adam Spolin. Hey, Stephen. Um, Eric told us that he was going to be coming off the bench uh, against Oklahoma City. Do you see this as kind of the long-term fix? And what did you? Uh, what was the reasoning to go with that? And who will start? Um. Yeah. It. it I, I guess for him, it has to be something consistent, right? Like it can't be game to game whether he's starting or coming off the bench players play their best when they know kind of what's coming so um <clears throat> we talked about it and I, I want him to be comfortable on the floor i want him to get his shot attempts i want him to be a primary scorer and i felt that with the first group it's a little bit harder for him to be that so um, we talked about it and I was good kind of going either way with how he felt because he's a veteran and he deserves that conversation. And um, we both came, kind of came to the conclusion that um, him coming off the bench would be a good thing. As far as who's starting, I'm still kind of working through it. House has been the guy for the last few days um and that's who it most likely will be but i reserve the right to change that um if necessary but i, I like house because he can guard the best player on the other team he's a spacer um he kind of can live off what james john c would do and then having eric's veteran scoring defending punch off the bench in a more featured role uh, kind of makes sense to me. Mark Berman. So Stephen, if I, if I, can, you, can, you roll through, can you roll through your other starters beyond uh, Daniel, uh, maybe Jane? Who, who are your starters for tomorrow night, for Wednesday night? It would be John, James, Daniel, Tuck, and Seawood. What is a luxury for a head coach to have a guy like Eric Gordon who can come off the bench and he's okay with it? Uh, I mean, it's it's huge for me to to have a guy who is established in the league and has done it before. You know, he's had success coming off the bench. He's had success as a starter. Um, the reason that he's coming off the bench, um, at least in these initial kind of conversations, is because he's so good. <laughs> and uh, for him to have the character to accept that role and, and roll with it, 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 it means a lot to me. Jonathan Fagan. You obviously didn't get as much time as you would have liked to have everybody in for a full training camp and preseason games. Where do you feel like this team is in terms of the process of making up for that lost time? Uh, we're getting there. We're not, we're not there. We, we still have a ways to go. Um, we've been spending a lot of time scrimmaging, which is good. Uh, just so guys can get their game legs and get their bodies right and, and, feel comfortable playing with each other and, um, you know, adapting the game situations. But, you know, the detail part gets lost a little bit when you're trying to do that. So finding that balance between guys getting game minutes and, and uh, scrimmaging versus drilling and really hammering in, hammering down the details. So um, we're not there yet. I wouldn't think that there are very many teams that are there yet, maybe the teams that have been together for a long time. But since this group hasn't been together for a very long time, we're, uh, I wouldn't say we're behind, but we're definitely not where we want to be. Where is James in that process relative, in terms of being sharp and in shape relative to his standard? Um, that's a good question. He, he's getting close, you know, part of the reason that we've been scrimmaging over the last couple of days and so he, cause he hadn't been playing five on five, he and Tuck hadn't been playing five on five. So for him to get out there and get up and down the floor and get a chance to play with John, like the new guys, you know, he, he has a new group of guys on the floor with them uh, who are in the point guard and center position. And those are, you know, two of the main spots, especially the way that we run our offense. So. He's getting there and, um, you know, we're doing everything we can to get him into uh, games and game shape. Thank you. Ali Kampajani. 
Hey, Coach, um, just the question regarding the five-out offense. I know in, when you play that sort of offense, you need, it's important to have the shooters in the corners and the wings. How do you determine which player is in which position, and, and what is the purpose of putting people strategically in those positions? Well, we try to be interchangeable where anybody can be in any spot. That's the, the advantage of having shooting on the floor. Initially, when you're teaching it, you kind of have the five man in the trail position because it makes it easier as far as um, having an advantage. Like the, when you have a smaller guy at the top of the floor, there's more switching involved and more thought that has to kind of go into it as well as reaction. So having a five man up at the top of the floor gives you less switching, more ability to draw a second defender, more ability to put pressure on the paint with rolls or drives and that sort of thing. But overall, um, you wanna be interchangeable. And at some point we will be more interchangeable than we are right now, but to, to do the initial teaching of five out, it's important that everybody kind of gets their spots and then from there, they learn the other spots and, and uh, will be more interchangeable and, and uh, not necessarily have the five men at the top of the floor. He can be in the corners where it's uncomfortable help for his defender or on the wings where there's cutting and offensive rebounding opportunity. Well, thank you. James Herbert. Hey, Stephen. Uh, you mentioned James getting used to playing with new teammates. I want to ask specifically about Christian Wood, you know, for all the talented teammates James has had over the years, I don't know that he's had a big man with quite the same skill set that the Christian has. What do you like about that combination? I know it hasn't been, you know, a large sample size. You've gotten to see them play together yet, but what do you think those guys can do together? They can do a lot. It's, it's hard to guard those two guys individually, and then you put them together and they can uh, really make special things happen. If they switch. Now James is going against a bigger five man. And, you know, that's part of his greatness is his isolation game. Christian Wood rolling into the rim against a smaller guy. He, as you saw in the last game, San Antonio, he was just catching in and finishing and fin finishing over people. So uh, those two guys in two man game are, are very potent and are going to be good for our, for our group. But you know, what they both do is they're both unselfish players and they create space for everybody else on the floor. Um, and, and that's good for, for the group as a whole. Thank, Thank you. you, coach. All right. Thank you, everyone. That concludes today's media availability.